it's Demi and tonight I am on the Walt Disney World Boardwalk. It's very lively here tonight, but I am here because I'm going to be dining at Flying Fish Restaurant. It has recently reopened and I have never dined here before, so I am super excited and curious to try it out. It's obviously located at the boardwalk with the Boardwalk Inn. It steps away from Epcot, Yacht and Beach Club, the Swan and Dolphin, and the Swan Reserve. So a lot of people have a lot of opportunity to go here, so let's see if it's worth going to. Let's get in there, let's get to some eating, and let's go get into some hijinks. So Flying Fish is located like on the corner next to Abracadabra bar, which is the Magician's Bar, which is wonderful. Um, they make great cocktails, and I'm so excited. Let's go in. I was just taken to my seat, and I have learned so much already. So this restaurant is steak and seafood considering, and the reason why it's called Flying Fish is because of this picture right here. At Atlantic City on a roller coaster, these roller coaster cars were called Flying Fish, and because of Atlantic City, the boardwalk, that's why it's called Flying Fish, but it's not just seafood. It's seafood steak. Um, and then up here, these are represented of bubbles. Over on that chandelier, those are actual flying fish. The walls are the waves, and then the carpet is the bottom of the ocean. My server brought me a magic hand towel. I'm gonna drop it in. Oh my gosh. <gasps> it's so fun. I love it. Ooh. That's awesome. You get to wipe your hands and you can discard it in this bowl. Okay, how cute is this silverware really quickly? Okay, I'm going to talk about the drink menu first. My server brought this and she called it the adult book. It's a huge binder of wines and it's, it's just, it goes on forever. But also in here are a couple of wine flights as well if you would like to do that. I was considering it, but it's a little bit pricey, so I'm unfortunately going to skip. Um, they do have wine by the glass and that will be in your main dining menu on the left side of the page and here is what that is if you'd like to pause to read. Let's take a look at the menu for appetizers. They have a lobster bisque, mussels, roasted pork belly, shrimp cocktail, salad, a cheese plate, and a oak grill bromine. For entrees, they have a salmon, a filet mignon, seafood pasta, scallops, red snapper, chicken, a New York strip, and a roasted tofu. You can do enhancements, sauteed shrimp, lobster tail, scallops, and grilled octopus. I was just brought some bread and butter. It's potato and chive bread and some sea salted butter. Looks great. Let's dig in. The bread is super warm. You can look at, see all the chive. You can like hear the crunch in it, but this is super soft. Excited to try it. Oh my gosh, look how soft this butter is. Oh my gosh, amazing. Look how, look how that spreads on there. I can't wait to try this. That is some really good bread. It is so crispy on the outside. And I like the flavor of the potato with the chive. It's really subtle, but it's really nice. And the bread is so warm and soft in the middle. Mm. Oh no. Am I gonna fill up on bread? I can't, I can't do this to myself. I can't, I have to review the food. The food. I, like, I can't do this. If I didn't, okay, but I'm gonna be totally honest with you. If I didn't, if I wasn't here reviewing the food for, for this channel, I would 100% be eating all of this bread. Taking one bite of everything, and maybe not even taking or maybe taking it home. Because um, that's what I do when restaurants give me bread. I fill up on the bread and I take my food home. My appetizer has arrived. I decided to go for the slow roasted pork belly. It comes with a spiced apple cherry gastrique. And I don't know what that is. That fried thing. Because I'm assuming that's the spiced apple cherry gastrique. But then there's that fried thing. Well, let's give it all, give it all a try. Look, that's the menu. That's what it says. That's all it says. Let's give it a try. The pork totally fell apart. I'm ready to dig in. But wait, I, I need to open this up. What is this? It's potato, right? It's gotta be potato. Well, we'll give it a try. First, the pork. 
All right. That's so good. First of all, it's so tender, literally falling apart. It's so smoky and it has such a great flavor. It has a little bit of sweetness to it, but not like sweet, sweet. That that is so good. Yeah, it's sweet and it's 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 smoky and a little sweet, and just like so full of flavor um, and just totally tender. Okay, my server just came. This was a potato. Is a potato croquette. So they take potato and a bit of the pork belly and they deep fry it. So we're oh, we are so ready for this. Let's do it. That's so good. Okay, so. To me, this is like the adult version of like a kid's meal. Like, it, like if you wanted like the like hash browns, that's like as a kid, this is the adult version of that. It is so good. There's so much flavor in this. The potato is so good and the crusty fried part is so crunchy. And then you do get like some saltiness and smoky and sweetness from the, um, from the pork itself. Mm. Oh my gosh, it tastes like a holiday meal. This tastes like a holiday meal, and it's just one potato croquette. This is such a fantastic appetizer. I really knew nothing about this restaurant going in, and honestly, I'm really happy right now. So the last thing to try on this plate is the, it's an apple coleslaw type thing, so let's try it. It's interesting. So there's like, it's apple and it has like vinegar and pepper on it. It's literally exactly how I just, it, it tastes exactly how I just described it. Um, it's interesting. Um, it's fine. Um, honestly, I just kind of want to get back to the pork and the uh, potato croquette. Um, they are the true stars, obviously. Um, but it, it, does, it definitely goes well with the pork because the pork has the sweetness to it. And the apple has a sweetness to it, but it like the vinegar cuts into it. Mm. Mm, yeah, all the flavors work really well together. Overall, this is a fantastic appetizer. This is just an appetizer. And there was like a lot on this plate, which makes sense for it to be sixteen dollars. But like, honestly, like for sixteen dollars, you do get a lot, and that is a piece of meat. And like meat in Disney is not very, you know, it's never like, you know, cheap. So I'm super happy with this appetizer. I highly recommend it, 100%. More potato for it. My entree has arrived. I did go for the plancha seared scallops. And what's so funny, it looks just like the photo on the My Disney Experience app because this is the thumbnail for the restaurant. Um, so this is savory grits, sweet corn, and pepadou emulsion. It's $49. It looks really good. I figured I wanted to get scallops was a good um, option to try because scallops is something that is like could be really good or if it's not cooked properly it could be really rubbery and just fail immediately. I don't know if you've ever seen like a Gordon Ramsay show where someone has messed up on scallops. He gets really mad um, and I have had some pretty bad scallops in my life and I love scallops so I'm curious to see how this is going to be. Um, let's give it a try. Let's cut into it first and see. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna try the scallop on its own first. No, that's cooked really well. Yep, the bottom and the top are seared perfectly. You can see right here. That is seared perfectly and it is not rubbery at all. It has a really nice bite to it. I really want to try it with like all the good stuff on it now. I'm going to get a bunch of all this stuff on it now. Hmm. That's interesting. I like the corn with it. All this like corn and tomato stuff on there. It's an interesting combination. Never had that with scallops before. The sauce itself. Oh, actually, that is pretty tasty. I don't think I got much sauce the first time. That has some really good flavor. This is a very interesting, weird combination. I, I'm really trying to have a hard, I'm having a hard time trying to explain it. Um, I just know that the scallops are cooked perfectly well. The chef cooks a medium, like that was the suggestion and that's that was perfect for me at least too. So I ordered it how the chef wanted to make it. Um, 
Yeah, I don't really know if I... The dish itself is tasty. Like, all this stuff together, like, it's... All this stuff together, I feel like, is a little, like, becomes, like, lost. When everything comes together, I lose flavor of the sauce. Like, it just becomes kind of, like, a glob and you just kind of taste corn. Because when I taste the sauce on its own, it's really good. But when I put it with the corn and all the, like, all these little bits, all these little bits on top, that's just all I taste. So that's my only issue with it. I I think that like if I just put the sauce like on the scallop, that is so good. Yeah, I wish there was like less corn and stuff. Like it's that's good on its own. The sauce and the scallops are good on its own. But honestly, all together, it's like kind of too much going on that it loses flavor and just kind of becomes corn. That's so weird and interesting. The corn has a very like intense flavor, you know? Well, interesting dish, very unique for sure. I've never had anything like it, um, but I do know that it was cooked perfectly. And there's really nothing totally wrong with it. It's just an interesting combination of flavors. Here is the dessert menu. First off, they have some specialty coffee and cocktails. They have an espresso martini, which yum, uh, a peanut butter freeze, a boardwalk cafe, which is a Maker's Mark bourbon, salty caramel, flying fish beanie style coffee blend, and freshly made cream, and then a hand pressed beanie style signature coffee blend and then for the actual desserts we have a coca breach which is vanilla custard chocolate bavario i don't even know what that word is crunch i'm sorry I, I i am so tired i cannot say that word uh we have also a creamy goat cheesecake honey glaze cassis gel pistachio cake um i am filming this during the 50th anniversary so they have a 50th treat here a 50th celebration midnight lemon and a lemon a key lime cake with coconut lime mousse guava and tropical coulis and tasting of an artisan cheese plate which sounds also great as well uh I'm gonna mull over and think about what I'm gonna get. Here is my dessert. I decided to go for the goat cheesecake because I've never had goat cheesecake before and I love me cheesecake. So I was curious to see what this was all about. So um, these little like football shapes are the cheesecake. It's drizzled with honey on top. This is the little crumbs on the bottom. It has um, Pistachio whipped cream in the center. This piece is white chocolate that is green. It looks really interesting and pretty, and I'm excited to try it. Okay. Ooh, it's very creamy. Obviously, it's cheese. I think you gotta just get a little bit of everything. All right, let's give it a try. You know what? Wait, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I want to try the goat cheesecake first. Hold on. I'm going to clean my fork off and we're going to try the goat cheesecake first. Okay, let's try this first. That is so bizarre. It's good though. But you can taste the like sourness, the, like goat cheese sourness. But I like it. Not everyone will like this though. This is not for everyone. Um, it's sweet and has a little sourness. I mean, yeah, you can tell it's goat cheese. Um, and you get a little extra sweetness from the honey. All right, now I'm gonna try it with all the like stuff, the pistachio uh, whipped cream and little crumbles. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really good. Oh, at the bottom of the cheesecake, there is pistachio crumble. I like it all together. It definitely helps balance out the goat cheese taste. Um, it makes it a little less like intense. This is actually really good. Not everyone is going to like this, um, but it's good. I really like this whipped cream, this pistachio whipped cream. Really good flavor. It doesn't taste like artificial or anything. It's super silky smooth, and I love the crunch from the crumble. Really tasty very unique dish absolutely and this is just a piece of white chocolate 
I think that was just supposed to be for the top. But this is super cool, super unique. What an interesting and fun dining experience, like very unique dining experience here at Flying Fish. Lots of dishes that like never had before, like the apples. Well, I mean, I had apple slaw before, but that one was a little different. That um, combination in the scallops was very weird. And I mean, then this, like, this whole thing, this goat cheese with the pistachio, never in my life have heard of that. And I've had a lot of cheesecake in my life. It's my favorite, like, kind of cake. Um, I eat a lot of cheesecake. It's always, like, the cake that people buy me for, like, my birthday and stuff. And, um, like, different types. And I've never even heard of it. And it's interesting and good. And it's a combination with the pistachio. What an experience here. Very unique restaurant super underrated why is like i feel like not many people talk about this very underrated spot so this restaurant definitely is not cheap they do accept accept dvc and annual pass so they did take that off so for my appetizer entree and dessert total with um my annual pass discount came out to 74.76 that is before tip um, so it's definitely not, you know, a cheap restaurant, but I have to tell you, like, the quality of the food was really, really good. I think it's a really unique dining experience. I think they try to figure out, like, very interesting flavor combinations here. Um, it was definitely a, I, I really can't tell you the last time I had such a unique experience, like, where I really had to think about what was kind of going on, and I was really, like, contemplating the flavors in my mouth, and you know, it was kind of like fun. It was more of a fun experience for me personally, especially having to relay the information to you where it's not just like, oh, well, it's X, Y, Z. It was really a complex um, flavor combination. And some things didn't work for me, like with the grits, with the scallops personally, but, um, you know, it wasn't like necessarily bad, but it just wasn't personally for me. But like that... Um, the dessert was a totally total game changer i mean i think this restaurant has a lot of um great options and i think it's super underrated and i think more people should know about it if they if they don't maybe people do and i just don't hear them talking about it well my dudes that was flying fish over here at the boardwalk it was definitely a very interesting dining experience i don't think it's like the best restaurant on property by far but i think it has a chef that really likes to play around with flavor combinations and I really appreciate that. You know, I eat at a lot of places at Disney, Universal, and nothing really surprises me anymore. This place really did. And I have to tell you, that first appetizer, that pork belly and that croquette was outstanding. That goat cheese and pistachio flavor combination was totally out there and wild and I absolutely loved it. Um, it was weird at first and then I was like eating it and I was like, this is so good. And then the scallops, yo, know, those combinations didn't personally work for me. Maybe it was just me, but individually everything was cooked perfectly delicious. Those scallops were seared perfectly, not rubbery. It had such a great bite to it. The sauce was really good. The grits were good on their own. I just didn't personally like everything together, but I appreciate the fact that somebody tried something different because I feel like everything is just the same. That seagull is so loud. Welcome to the boardwalk. <laughs> Anyway, let me know what you thought of Flying Fish. Is this some place that you would want to come to? Have you been here before? What was your experience? I think it was a cute place. I don't think it's necessarily the best place, but I would actually come back because they intrigued me that much. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit your bell notification so you don't miss anything that comes on this channel. Shh. And follow me on Instagram at Magical Hydrings. Be sure to check out my Patreon, become a patron. You get extra exclusive bonus content and you'll be helping me to continue to create great content here on this channel. And until next time, my dudes, I hope you guys get into some hijinks very, very soon. Ha ba bye Stop it, Siegel.